Okay, welcome to the Charged Up Extravaganza. My name is Dan Judson, and this event is Charged Up. Uh, some important information websites that you may find beneficial for yourself is the Macomb Science Olympiad website. Uh, there's an elementary section, and there will be a section for the Charged Up. If you have questions, you can review that, as well as click on the Frequently Asked Question button, and you can send me an email with any question that you have. I usually respond within 24 or 48 hours. If there's problems with the website, you cannot get through that way, you can always email, email me directly to dan.judson at molex.com and that information will be forwarded back to you as well as back to the website so that it's available for everybody. Uh, for the Charged Up uh, event, there is a worksheet that gives a description of some of the schematic symbols that will be used in the event. You can get that from your head coach for your school. Uh, we will have things like a schematic symbol for a battery, a schematic symbol for the bulb, some switches which are normally open and normally closed, we will also have some questions that ask a pictorial. To make it easier for the kids, this is actually a pictorial of a battery, and this is a picture of a bulb, a little bit more realistic to what the kids are used to seeing. In this drawing on the sheet, shows this as not connected, and this is being connected. But quite often when the kids are drawing the circuits, they have a tendency draw something like this and put a very small dot in there and I cannot tell whether this is connected or not connected. So what I ask to help us during the grading is if it's not connected to put a little loop and go around. There will be no questions that directly ask this but sometimes when the kids draw, do their drawings, they have problems and lines get crossed and that's where the confusion comes in. So to make things easier for the scores as well as for your children, we're asking that they do this and this on the drawings. One other area that we've noticed in the scoring that gets a little bit difficult is this is a normally open switch, this is a normally closed switch. You can see that it's making contact here and this one is open. In the rush during the competition, the kids often draw something like this. I cannot tell whether that is open or closed. Technically it's opened, but it really looks like they meant for it to be closed. So to avoid confusing, if it's a normally open switch, I am asking that the children draw an arrow like this in the direction that the switch moves. So it moves from open to closed. For a normally closed switch, the arrow would go in the opposite direction so that I can see that it goes from closed to open. So in this instance, if they did this, I could see that the switch is clearly closed and it will open. Or if they do this, that the switch is opened and, clo and um, no current can flow through and there will be no confusion during the scoring. It just helps make things a little bit easier so that we don't make a mistake when scoring the children's tests. Uh, another website where you may find some useful information is on this uh, sheet that's on the website. Uh, it gives a list of where I've gotten my equipment from in the past. And generally, most of my equipment comes from carolina.com. Um, if you have trouble accessing that, you can also get it locally here at Arbor Scientific, uh, which is in Ann Arbor. It's arborsci.com. And uh, some of the more common components, such as the clip leads and so forth, I just pick up at the local Radio Shack store. For the event this year, we will have seven stations, and the kids will have somewhere between three to four minutes for each station uh, to complete that section and move to the next station. On the first station, typically it's true and false questions, and what we will have is a, a, some circuits, and we will ask if the light bulbs light or don't light. There might be some other true-false questions, some definitions, uh, that type of thing that could be also included. Um, another section that we have is we have a multiple choice section where the kids are asked different questions and asked to give a choice of several different answers, five, A, B, C, D, or E. These will all be recorded on a Scantron. We have five sections that will be using the Scantron, approximately 20 questions per section. 
a little bit more could be 15 to 25 but on average 20 questions per table. We will also have a section where the kids will be asked to draw a circuit and the final section will be a area where the kids will be asked to construct a circuit. Last year we had approximately 20 points for each one of the Scantron stations, the five Scantron stations. We had 30 points for the draw the circuit and we had 40 points for the construct the circuit. Since that's the most complicated, we felt that that was the area we need to give the most points to. For constructing the circuit, the kids will be using these type of components. They will be using a battery holder where they can hook the batteries up in series or they can hook them up in parallel like this or they can use the jumper wires to hook them up. All are equally correct. From this we can hook this up to the light bulbs and if required can be hooked up to a switch. hook up to the last section of the switch. It's important that the kids complete the circuit and everything is hooked up and the light bulb comes on. One of the basic things that I will ask the kids to do is I will ask them to construct a circuit tester. A basic circuit tester, the simplest form of this, there are many forms, but the simplest form looks like this. Simple circuit tester. It will have a lead coming off the battery it will have a lead hooked up to a light bulb and it will have another lead here. From this, the kids can check to see if something is a conductor or an insulator. But one of the most important things they do before they start, they should hook this up and see if the battery lights the light bulb. If they know, they know their circuit tester is hooked up properly. They can use this for testing such things as the mystery circuit card. Circuit 97 is hooked up to which button, A, B, C, or D, depending on which light bulb comes up, will tell them which is the correct answer. They can use this. Another thing they may use on the circuit card is a multimeter. This is the multimeter we will be using in the competition. It is model 82140 from Sears. We will turn that on and they will check and see which circuits are connected. That's another section of the test they will perform. They could also be used to ask, ask to use the meter to determine the voltage of something, which they would want to turn it into this range, or if it's a single battery, into this range. They may be asked to measure the current, which would be one of these three ranges here, the amp DC, or they could be asked to measure the resistance. And the resistance would be somewhere around here where you can see the little Greek symbol omega for ohms. These are examples of the mystery circuit cards. Typically we have the numbers on one side and A, B, C, D, or E on the other side of the card. And the kids will be asked which circuit is hooked up to which letter. We could have a combination, we could have C and D hooked up together, or we could have none, could be a correct answer for this. If you'd like to construct your own cards, they are typically set up like this. Paper fasteners through a foam board, wires wrapped around them. If the wires cross, it's important that you tape them so they don't short circuit out. Then we just put a little paper cardboard cover over the back of it so the kids can't check the answers and you're done.